So first things first, um, we have an app. So big news getting into the 21st century. Uh, we were really just preparing for Camp Docs, which is what I'll talk about a lot. Um, but we said we need we need to put our foot forward and really get the app going. Um, and we've made it happen. So there's an app in both the Android and Apple stores for you to download. Um, and the whole point of this is to get information to you faster. Um, so a lot of what happens during the week, those those announcements in the dining hall that are, are spoken by uh, our program commissioners might not be the best way you can kind of hear something. Um, so we, we wanted to get those announcements put in there ahead of time, kind of so you can see the schedule for the week um, and get all that information. Um, so there's a lot of great tools, a lot of goodies in there, um, a couple different new maps, um, some added campsites in there. Um, but there's even one map that you can geotag your location. So if we were to pull that up now uh, on property, we would see ourselves as a blue dot. Pretty, pretty awesome. So you can walk around camp and see you as that blue dot, and it's going to move around quite a bit. So awesome, awesome features on there. Um, merit badge schedule, the leader's guide, how to attend, information for parents. If there's not something that you see, there's also a way to get in touch with us directly through the app. So you can just say, hey, I thought there was going to be information on the Scoutmaster trainings. And if it's not in there or not able to be found, we can add that in right away. Um, another great feature is if there's any schedule changes or weather going on or anything like that, we're able to put out a push notification that says this is the schedule change. And anyone that has this app installed would get that notification immediately. Um, we don't want to take advantage of those notifications, so we'll be putting those out kind of sparingly um, and as needed when that important information arises. Other topics in this meeting are going to cover the schedule, ferry and busing for those Long Island troops, New York troops, um, program updates from everything that Clinton's been working on, with the leader's guide to those staff manuals, um, what have we included in that program. We're going to get to all of that today in this meeting. Um, ATV provisional opportunities, uh, all of the, the finer details about camp this summer. So, Camp Doc, if you have checked your email and you are a primary contact for a troop at this point, you should have gotten at least one email, uh, probably two or three by now it being one month in. Um, but you should have received an invite from the Camp Doc platform to get you onboarded into Camp Doc. Um, this is the new platform that we're using to help us go to the 21st century um, and get online medical forms. Uh, it's an awesome transition that we're making that's going to save us a lot of uh, headaches and a lot of headaches for the, the leaders collecting the forms. Um, it's a lot of it is streamlined into into a couple different ways that will help you monitor your adult processes and your scout processes and who's completed what um, without having to actually collect all of the papers that you always have to collect. Um, moving forward into the future, uh, the, the benefits of, of this system are <laughs> quite numerous. We're, we're going to be able to retain data and actually save all of those, those profiles for you. So, so from year to year, you're actually going to have that same profile and be able to update it regularly. Our goal is to ultimately provide more access to you so you're able to use this um, in, in the off season as well. But just getting our feet wet with summer uh, and the usability for the summer season first, um, but that future gives us a, a large glimmer of hope when, when we see all of these awesome features. So, Emergency contacts are listed in there. There's also an emergency notification text system um, that's included in that. Um, but once you get access to it, um, I want to show you where you can go to get resources. For that. So this should be sharing the Yahoo website now. Does that sound right, Quinton? All right. Excellent. So at least that works. So yahoo.org slash camp doc is going to have the majority of the resources um, for you for camp doc ever. So if you have, if you do not have access to camp doc, 
The campus doc access request form is located on yahoo.org slash campus. If you don't have access right now and you want access um, or you need access for your troop, please, please, please submit it through here. Let me know. Um, I've probably processed about 60 already uh, for primary contacts for troops, getting you guys access. Um, it is not just a system that allows one person for the troop to see all of this. Uh, we do realize that it's usually a lot of people helping to make this process happen. Um, and one of one of the nice features is that you can have all of those people that help you added to this profile so they can each add in their various components. Um, so we can add multiple users in the system to all have access to that troop account. So if they need access, just file a request through here and we're happy to add them in. So questions with camp docs and how to, how to follow through and learn the process. These links in this bubble right here, the general camp doc FAQ, um, how to navigate your profile, the upload roster and the profile import, as well as the adult slash scout, how to join slash navigate your profile. These four links are probably about 10 minutes of your time, six minutes of video footage for those 10 minutes and probably four minutes of reading and looking at pictures for the other. Um, but that's gonna tell you exactly kind of as it says, it's gonna show you what you need to do to get those scouts and adults onboarded. And then where it says adult slash scout, how to join and navigate your profile, that's what you're gonna give those adults and scouts who are trying to figure out what to do. Um, to, to present them a little bit of information about how to fill out their, their health. If you lose access to your account and don't know your password, that's a camp doc support question. I won't be able to help reset your password, but I'm more the, the kind of support that, why do we have to fill out these forms or I don't know where to find these forms. That's, that's more of a me question, but if you have questions on Camp Docs access, or you've lost your password, or, or that they have a phenomenal support team, um, and their support site and training resources are located here as well. Um, I have a weekly meeting scheduled with them. Um, so if, if you have questions and we can't figure out a solution uh, on a weekly basis, we kind of get that scheduled uh, and those questions answered. Um, so we're, we're really excited to have this opportunity to partner with them this year. Uh, and, and moving forward with camp, um, it's already made life hopefully a lot easier for you guys for collecting health forms, or it definitely will in the near future as you on. I also do want to point out, we do have a Q&A section um, in there that our key staff are monitoring. We will have a time for questions and that at the end, if they don't get discussed or announced or anything um, during this, happily invite any of the, the key staff to kind of jump in if there's an applicable question that, that should be answered in there if you need to answer a question. All right. So that's Camp Docs. And we'll be talking more specifics about where to find specifics on there throughout the presentation. All right. Sunday to Sunday program. Schedule changes. So, schedule changes. So, we are keeping the Sunday to Sunday program uh, that we returned last year. Um, everybody had a lot of fun at the dress parade and enjoyed the Saturday night show back on Saturday. Um, so, we wanted to make sure those key elements have stayed and still exist. Um, so, there's no worry for that. But we did want to bring up a couple changes that are important to the schedule um, as they allow more time for other things and more time for you guys to get packed up on Sunday. Um, so the dress parade will be held 15 minutes earlier, um, and that helps with a little bit of the ferry scheduling on the other end of things. Um, so at 1015 on Sunday, the Sunday breakfast, it's important to note, is going to be at 7 a.m. And then the services are going to be at 8 a.m. So an hour in between those but starting at 7 a.m. and then 8 a.m. services. The arrival into camp on Sundays is going to be at 4 p.m., um, adjusted for 3.30 last year, so not too much of a difference, but allowing a little more time to get those sites 
set up and ready for you guys to enter. The Scoutmaster meeting. Um, so there's a Scoutmaster meeting on Mondays um, with myself uh, and Quinton. Um, that's going to be at 7 p.m. pretty much no matter what, but sometimes it rains and you wouldn't know where to go if it if it happened to rain. So we still want you to attend that meeting, but that meeting would take place at the Medicine Bow Dining Hall if that retreat ceremony is canceled due to weather. Something new to our program this year, um, Sunday tours. It's They're gonna be available starting at each of the dining halls. Um, 5.30, 6 and 6.30 are the starting times in the Three Point Medicine Bow and Sandy Beach Dining Halls correspondingly. Um, but the 5.30 start time on that is the Three Point Dining Hall, six o'clock at the Medicine Bow Dining Hall, and 6.30 at the Sandy Beach Dining Hall. We've never offered a Sunday tour as part of our program before, uh, but it makes a lot of sense. So scouts aren't rushing from merit badge to merit badge in the afternoon on Monday without knowing where they need to go. So we're excited for that offer. Do you need to take the ferry? For a lot of you, that answer is going to be no, um, but for some of you, that will be yes. Um, if it's your first year attending camp, um, I, I will definitely let you know that I was able to take the ferry uh, to the New York leaders meeting, um, and I was happily surprised at the ease and flexibility of everything. I did not know it was going to be that easy. Um, so if you are coming from New York, um, there's some good tips on here uh, and on our website um, about taking the ferry, as well as what times to book the ferry for. So two o'clock leaving and then 1.30 or 1.30 p.m. for the New London back to New York. All right, program updates. We're gonna throw this over to Quinton to get us started. Hey everybody. Uh, so we got some fun and exciting program updates coming to camp this summer. Um, right off the bat, we're adding in an axe throwing range. It's going to be located directly next to the archery range. Uh, so if you would like, you and your troop would like, you can come down. Uh, the first session will be kind of like an orientation on, you know, the rules and safety procedures for axe throwing. And then the idea is uh, that following that orientation, you and your troop can sign up for times to come on down to the axe throwing range and participate in axe throwing. Um, and you would just need to be accompanied by an adult leader that was at the orientation. Um, also returning, or actually uh, returning this summer, is uh, the war canoes to the three waterfronts, which is very exciting. You and your troop, um, the war canoes can hold up to 12 scouts, um, 10 to 12 scouts. So you guys can take that out on the pond um, and go canoe around and have a fun bonding experience out on the water. Um, New this summer, we're receiving 12 new paddle boards and all the paddle boards will be uh, dispersed to each individual waterfront. So that means that there will be paddle boards at the Three Point waterfront, the Medicine Bow waterfront and the Sandy Beach waterfront for scouts to go down and uh, participate with or adult leaders as well. Um, the kayaks that were um, being housed at Sandy Beach for the last couple of summers are going back to their original home of the Ashway Aquatic Center in Medicine Bow. So if you'd like to take out a kayak, you can go to Medicine Bow. And on Tuesday nights, we are adding in a kayak race that will uh, take place down at the Ashway Aquatic Center. And uh, we have a new event that's coming up that I'm going to pass over to Alexandria um, to talk about. Thanks, Quentin. So Wednesday nights over in the Medicine Bow Dining Hall at 8 p.m., we're hosting a new event. We're going to host a trivia night. It's sponsored by our Yagu Alumni Association, who do a lot of great work uh, helping us purchase fun things like the ATVs or uh, helping us revitalize the property. So we're really happy to incorporate them into our program. Uh, they're going to be working alongside me to host this trivia night. All are welcome to join. We're going to have staff there. We're going to have adult leaders there. We're going to have uh, youth there. We just ask that you keep it to groups of eight because we have eight to a table. And I hope to see you all there this summer. And now I'm going to pass it over to Ethan. Thanks, Alex. And I am definitely psyched for trivia. I know I'm going to have a team of my staff there. We're going to have a table. We're going to have a great time. 
But something I'm even more excited about is our upcoming tie-dye night. And so unfortunately, I can't see all of you that are in attendance tonight, but I would like to put out there, how many of you have ever wanted a customizable Yagu t-shirt, something that is your own, something that maybe matches your troop colors or maybe matches the colors of your favorite camp? Hopefully a lot of red and black out there, but you're going to have an opportunity this upcoming summer to make your own customized Yagu t-shirt at our tie-dye night. And so at our craft center, we're going to be shutting down every merit badge that is going on. There's going to be no leather work. There's going to be no wood carving, no basketry. None of that's going to be going on on Friday night at seven o'clock. Instead, the entire center is going to be de de dedicated to just tie-dye. And so each pavilion is going to be offering an opportunity to do tie-dye. The shirts are going to be available in the blockhouse all day on Friday. Unfortunately, not earlier in the week, but just on Friday. And so the shirts that are $10 each are your ticket into the event. And you're going to be able to walk out with your own customized Yagu shirt that has our beautiful new logo on it as well. And so I hope to see everyone down at the Craft Center this summer, Friday nights at 7. And I'm going to throw it back to Quinn to talk about Adventure Island. Thank you, Ethan. So uh, as uh, Ethan had alluded to, Adventure Island is coming back this summer. Uh, we will have some of the uh, inflatables that you've seen before, some of the obstacle course pieces that we've all had fun on. And we're also going to be bringing out um, some new inflatables uh, that have never been seen before and uh, are going to be very fun and exciting and large. So look forward to seeing that down at the Sandy Beach waterfront this summer. Uh, also uh, new to Yagu, we have a couple new merit badges that we'll be doing this summer. Uh, at the Nature Center, we've got Sustainability will be joining, um, and that will be available during the uh, all the day sessions, so 9 to 10.30, 10.30 to 12, 2 to 3.30, and 3.30 to 5. Uh, we have Fire Safety, which will be taking place down at the barn, uh, and that will be available during the 7 to 8 session. And then we also have coming to the Craft Center model design and building, which will be available during the 1030 to 12 and 330 to 5 time slot. Uh, you guys can find um, more information on those merit badges and once again, the times and locations in the leader's guide um, or on the website. And then something new that we're doing with a couple of our merit badges this year is we decided to make climbing and cooking merit badges both two sessions long so it'll be the morning session which is 9 to 12 and then the afternoon session which is 2 to 5. Uh, we realized that these merit badges uh, needed some more uh, time for practical use of the skills so more time for scouts and climbing merit badge to uh, work on their you know climbing the tower and uh, technique um, and also in the cooking merit badge the scouts in that merit badge need more time to actually get their hands on food uh, doing some you know fun cooking uh, activities and whatnot um, so those two merit badges if you have scouts that are planning on taking them they will be two blocks long for more fun with the activities themselves. All right. So I've seen a couple of questions pop through. I want to answer one um, about Camp Docs before we move on, um, about uploading the entire roster or some of the roster or any of that. Um, so if you start off and you know two people are attending and you just want to input those two people, that's OK. You'll make your CSV as instructed on the videos on what that format should look like. And put those two people in, upload it, keep that CSV file. Um, because if you learn that two other kids want to attend and they're definitely confirmed, you could add them into that same CSV. Don't change anything on the first two, but then include those two after um, and upload that form. So you can keep an ongoing roster that you'll upload with those people um, as needed once you get the confirmation from those people. Um, so you can upload uh, everybody you know at that point, but add on as needed to that same file. Um, and when you upload it, it's going to say, we've recognized that there are 30 of the same profiles in this document and one new one, um, or whatever information that it is um, identified. All right. So. Those are a lot of program specifics on um, other parts of program that we need to talk about. ATV. Last year, we started off um, 
offering our ATV program. We had a nice trail, a nice course, all brand new. Um, and we had 192 people that were able to take that course, but we had over 600 people that wanted to take the ATV uh, course. So we needed to do uh, some math and see what the best best case was uh, for this year. Um, and, and we decided that getting eight more ATVs was, was the only way we could go about it. Um, so we'll have 16 ATVs uh, this, this summer um, for four instructors and then 12 participants instead of six um, for each session. So that, that sign up um, for ATV interest, um, the ATV interest survey is going to be available from the dates of May 15th through 20th. Um, so this is, so to speak, putting your name in the hat for scouts. Um, so during those dates of May 15th through 20th, they'll have the opportunity to put their name in the hat um, so that by June 1st, they will know if they are selected or not. Um, it's open all those five days. It's going to be emailed out to Scoutmasters, put on our social media, featured on the website. Um, so that link will definitely be available um, for any scout that is 14 or older. Um, that is the minimum requirement. And we'll have those requirements on the next page. Um, but what is new to do with ATV? So all those scouts, those 192 scouts that participated last year, is there anything for them? And the answer is yes, absolutely. Um, so the Tuesday through Thursday, seven to eight sessions are going to show um, all of those scouts who, who took the course last year. Um, if they've got their cards, uh, they want to bring those back and show them that they've got those cards. If for some reason they got crumpled up and washed a couple times and those cards may not any longer exist, um, that's okay. We have a record of everyone who took the course from last year. Um, it's on a giant list, so we'll be able to search the name. Um, but they're invited to come up Tuesday through Thursday at that seven to eight session um, to participate in trail rides and ride the new courses. Um, but that seven to eight session on the Friday is going to be geared toward all the participants from that given week to end the, end with a nighttime kind of ride on the opportunity. But requirements for that program, um, scouts do have to be 14 to 17. Um, those are offered like normal merit badge slots from 9 to 10.30, 10.30 to 12, 2 to 3.30, and 3.30 to 5. Um, and it's featured up at the Shea Shelter on the Curtis Track. Um, and there is an additional cost when registering, not when you're putting in for the interest survey. Um, so a little tip or trick uh, for those scouts that want to um, ensure that they get a better chance. Um, if, if they just really want to ride an ATV and they're able to participate another week at camp, um, they could attend our Fun Friends Adventure Program one of those other weeks um, and put their name in the hat for that week at camp as well. Um, so they could put in for more weeks and then sign up for the week that they could possibly get selected for when they find out. New Frontier. I'm going to throw it back over to Quinton to talk about this program. Hey, everybody. So you're at Yagu Scout Reservation. We've got a very fun and interesting uh, First year camper program, if you will, it is not like any other first year camper program. And that is because uh, our schedule is a rolling schedule. So essentially what that means is we teach the requirements uh, for first and second class requirements throughout the week in different blocks. So each um, requirement that we teach at New Frontier is offered at least twice at different times throughout the week. So if one of the times doesn't work uh, for a scout because they may be in a merit badge, we offer that same requirement at a different day in the week at a different time. Uh, the New Frontier staff is very flexible. They want to work with you. Um, so if none of the times work, the seven to eight session is a great session to go down to the New Frontier Center and um, work with uh, staff there. Uh, to catch up on that requirement. Uh, obviously, the more advanced notice, the better. So that way they can be prepared for you to come down and work on, um, you know, maybe knots and lashings or map and compass um, with the staff that's down there. Also, during the 7 8 session, uh, they teach tote and chip and fireman chip, as well as tote and chip and fireman chip instructor. So scouts that get that instructor um, certification can go back to your troop and teach your scouts how to earn their tote and chip and fireman chip. 
it's a great program, very hands-on. Um, and once again, uh, the New Frontier staff wants to work with you. So if there's a time that you can make it down that isn't um, published on the schedule, uh, you can go down and try and make something work during the seven to eight session when more staff is available to help. Um, but yeah, the New Frontier program's a great program for scouts, not just first year scouts, any scouts that are looking to get their first and second class requirements done should go check out the New Frontier schedule and leave some availability in their schedule to attend those classes. All right, thank you very much. I'll turn it right back over to John. All right, thank you. So provisional opportunities, it's another way to come to camp. Um, but for some more information on that, I'm going to throw it over to Ethan. Thanks, John. So down in Camp Medicine, but we have three different provisional campsites that offer scouts the opportunities to stay for additional weeks. And so the first one is our Weeblos Outdoor Adventure. And so this is for scouts or Cub Scouts that are either Weeblos 1 or Arrow of Light. It's a great opportunity to come down and get a taste of what Yagu is like. Our Cub Scouts get to go down to each one of our most popular program centers, whether that be the challenge course, the waterfronts, the shooting ranges, whatever it may be, the Scouts have the opportunity to go and get a little bit of experience in each of those centers. So if you have a pack that is also said associated to your troop, or you just know a pack that's in your town, and you know their Scouts may be going to Yagu the following summer as a member of your troop, this is a great way for them to get that introduction with our experienced staff that is gonna introduce them to what camp is like. The next program, which is for our Scouts VSA members, is our Fun Friends and Adventure program located in campsite Baden-Powell. This is a troop that is formed every week with Scouts from across the country as they come to continue their favorite Yagu activities. Maybe it's earning more mayor badges, maybe it's doing requirements at New Frontier, or maybe it's just going down and enjoying the waterfront for the week. Whatever a Scout wants to do, they have the opportunity to enjoy here at Yagu with our newly formed unit. So we have staff that run the site and they operate as a full unit with a senior patrol leader competing for Troop of the Week. It's a great experience to continue enjoying Yagu at a great half price to your first week. And the third program is our Yagu Leadership Experience housed in Campsite Minikisu. This is a program for scouts that are 14 years or older. It's a two week program where the first week is a leadership week, developing those essential skills, whether it be effective communication, utilizing the patrol method, working in the site with our experienced staff as they develop all those essential parts of a leader's toolkit. The second week, the experience week, is an opportunity to put a practical use to those skills they learned in the first week, going to the different program centers. Maybe they really wanna be a lifeguard one day or just enjoy swimming. They can go work alongside our staff that are down at the waterfronts and be a crucial part of scouts' lives, maybe even helping them learn how to swim or helping them in a canoeing class. This applies to all of our different program centers as those Yagu Leadership Experience Scouts get to put those leadership skills to the test. It's a phenomenal program that rivals any other in the country and has its own unique twist on it in that two-week system. The cost for this program is $425 for the two weeks at camp. So if you have any scouts that maybe are looking to be a senior patrol leader, looking for a little bit of extra leadership training, there's no better place to spend, send them than the Yagu Leadership Experience. And to round it all up, we also have our day camp program that's going to be available week six and seven this upcoming summer. So that's going to be the first and second week of August. So not only do Weeblos and Arrow of Light Scouts have the opportunity to come to camp, there's also opportunities for any Cub Scouts to come and enjoy our day camp programs those two weeks. So if you're a local unit, this is a great chance for even those Cub Scouts to get a taste of what Yagu is like. Awesome. So other opportunities to come to camp. Um, so we have an OA ordeal coming up uh, in just about a month and a day. Um, so if you're a member of the Tulpe Lodge, um, you'll be able to participate in that. Um, we have an Arrow Corps week. Um, so if you're a member of the Order of the Arrow and not a member of the Tulpe Lodge, um, so from New York or somewhere further out uh, than just Rhode Island, you have the opportunity to come to camp for $150 um, for a week of service and a week of enjoying everything we have to offer. Um, so that morning, entire morning block, um, they focus on a specific work project for the week. Um, 
last year it was the ATV trails. So they did a lot of work building some bridges on the ATV trails, um, cleaning up some of the brush along the sides and that. Um, and then the afternoon, they get to take advantage of the wonderful facilities here, um, take advantage of all the merit badges there are to offer. So I believe the phrase is work hard, play hard. Um, this program fully epitomizes that um, and they do some, an awesome job with the work that gets done there. Fellowship on Friday is for anybody in the Order of the Arrow as well. Um, a great thing to take note of right across from the Buckland Building um, on the diagonal corner uh, is the Order of the Arrow area. And they will have fellowship on Friday nights consisting of ice cream, lawn games, many members of the OA all wearing their, their sash, getting to know each other. Um, it's a great opportunity to meet other people from other lodges um, and get some ice cream, of course. Uh, the tap out ceremony at the Saturday night show, a great opportunity um, if you've been elected to the order of the hour within the past six months to be recognized for your accomplishments. Um, and for anyone in council in Tool Bay Lodge, um, unit elections are available during your week. You just need to speak to somebody about that ahead of time. NYLT. Um, so we spoke about our featured program of the Young Leadership Experience. Um, Week eight, we actually host the National Youth Leadership Training. Um, it's an opportunity to get more training um, with a staff that comes in. We host the program here, um, but a, a staff of a bunch of different volunteers from all over kind of come in and teach that as an opportunity during week eight. Um, the cost for that is $325. Um, it's a six day course um, and a great experience if you're looking for a little more leadership later in the summer. Final payments and how does that work? So we're transitioning almost everything into the 21st century um, and accepting online medical forms, online troop submissions and that. But we are still asking that final payments get mailed into us at 61 Camp Yaga Road. Um, the final payment workbooks are located on the troop section. So I'm gonna show you here quickly in that troop section, all of the variety of resources that do exist um, so if you have questions with Camp Doc, all the resources are linked there. Um, the fee summary, important dates, which should outline the, the lockout dates for your medical profiles, um, when we want those in, essentially. Um, a note with the lockout date that's listed there, getting locked out from your profile, do not worry about. Um, as long as there is information to enter, you will have access to that account. Um, the lockout just means that once that information is 100% complete, you will be locked out of that and we will use that information. Um, so we're asking for that five days in advance. So at the latest at the Tuesday barbecue date, uh, but other resources on here, uh, great things, the program highlight sheets. So take a look at those for all of the weekly themes and everything. Um, then we've got refresh. And this will be up a little bit higher, but the 2023 pre-check-in information. So if you're looking for payment workbooks um, and what those are, these are located in that yellow box down there. There's one for in-council and spirited adventure troops, as well as one for out-of-council troops. Um, so this will take all of your payment information, uh, discounts, siblings, anyone attention, attending high adventure programs, uh, jamboree, all of that is taken into account in this form. Uh, print that out and then submit that with a check. And that's all we're asking that kind of get mailed for final payments. So this page has a red box around something very, very important. Um, I know that this transition, we know that this transition to Camp Docs is a little bit different um, and a little bit more involved than just a couple pieces of paper. Um, so we want to be able to provide as much support in this process as possible. Um, so we're, we have this concept called office hours uh, that's gonna be starting May, um, the first Thursday in May from five to 6 p.m. Um, so it's a great opportunity where if anybody has a question, uh, they are able to attend the Zoom meeting um, and ask that question or get their questions answered. Uh, it's a great concept that college professors offer to all of their college students. They usually have one or two times a week. 
Um, and then college students don't happen to take advantage of that time that the professors are offering them. Um, so we are hoping that we can model that process um, and provide a great opportunity for you guys where we will be able to answer your questions. Um, so where do you find those links? In the contact us section. Um, I'll probably put it in the troop section as well. But for right now, in the contact us section underneath more, and that will lead you right here. Uh, you can ask more questions there, but that basic contact information and the Zoom hours here. After the first two weeks, we're going to reevaluate how that's doing. Uh, if if office hours are needed, if we need to offer a lot more different time availability, um, but we'll go from there once we once we get started. Um, if you need a question answered, please. Please don't wait till then. You can send an email or anything. If you need clarification on something, um, please call, email, and that. But if we can't get back to you because I am one person, Alexandria is one person, Ethan is one person, Quentin, we are all only one person at the end of the day. Um, we we will be able to get back to you for sure at that point in time. Um, but there are a lot of questions with this, um, and we want to make sure we get get you answers soon enough. Um, so if it's if it's something that can be answered at that point in time, feel free to pop in um, anytime during the q &A. Right. So pre-check-in information. If everything's going on Camp Docs, all of that pre-information stuff that would get mailed in previously no longer needs to get mailed in. So what we ask is that those Camp Doc profiles for both the troop and individual participant on um, get finalized to 100% before you step on reservation. If there is a problem or you can't figure something out and, and that feel free to send an email, let us know. We'll figure out, get a fix in the works uh, to make sure that that is all set. Uh, but that pre-check-in information is really all done through that online platform now. Um, just that mailed in payment, um, which should make check-in on Sunday a lot easier, a lot smoother for you guys. Uh, you'll be able to come up to the Buckland, get those hats, leader wristbands, um, say hello, and then head right back down and head back to your campsites to check on in. Um, our, our whole goal with this is to make your lives easier, though. Um, we're able to process it a lot smoother with everything um, and upload notes to your profile for making things easier in the longer term. So we talked specific health forms and that are all on camp docs, but there are some states, some schools uh, that require a physical by a doctor um, that's specific for their school form. Um, so we have a great resource that is on the health forms part of our website, which is loading there. So health forms located here. So if you've got questions, if that signature is still valid uh, and you're attending week five, that signature needs to be signed by July 1st, 2022 for that to still be valid. Uh, but this will answer a lot of your questions about specific health form information, whether that doctor's signature would be accepted on another piece of paper. Um, but when in doubt, just upload more information uh, because more information could not hurt in that case. Um, we're able to reject submissions and send a notification back to that email if something doesn't get accepted, uh, with, and we'll include a note as to the reasoning why. We also found out that we're able to let the Scoutmaster know too. So if there's something that's been rejected, we'll be able to let the Scoutmaster know as well as the person who's getting it rejected. So the water bottle on there, this is really important and a good reminder. So last year we had a problem with dehydration um, all throughout the week where scouts just wouldn't be drinking water until they thought they needed it. But the truth was that they needed it all the time. Um, so we we're trying to put an emphasis a little bit before camp to make sure there's that reminder of you need to drink water all throughout the week, not just when you think you're thirsty and not just at meals, uh, but bring a water bottle water bottle. There's uh, filling stations all around camp accessible for everyone. 
Okay, so the program request. There's been some process changes with this uh, for the first time in a long time, uh, but we wanted to make this as smooth as possible. Um, and it is one of those submissions on the camp doc profile. So there's that program request section in the middle and it has that check button. What is that? So there are two forms on here. The opportunities, which is a page in the leader's guide, um, and it features all of those available times for each of the different demos, for each of the different activities that you can choose. Um, and then we have all of those opportunities there. Then here we have a template. This template is available for you to print out, but it lists all of the different opportunities they have. So between this page and then the opportunities page, having both of those next to each other, you can present that to your SPL and say, figure out a schedule of what you'd like us to do for troop activities this week. Some troops don't do any activities off of this list. Others choose a couple. Um, a lot of people put in for Adventure Island. Um, it's a great opportunity. One thing to note is that those sessions are just half an hour, so a little bit shorter than that full session, but it's still going to tire you out absolutely on on adventure island um but that after they go through that template figure out those sessions this does need to be submitted back on camp docs so you'll have those opportunities you'll have the scouts right next to it so instead of na they could probably write we wanted to do a hiking a hike on that 9 to 10 30 session tuesday morning so you'd go into your camp doc profile you would click on that section of Troop program request, and you would put in at 9 a.m. that nature. Um, so just cross-referencing a little bit there. Um, this is a, a large change in how we've previously done things, um, but the whole goal is to get you information sooner than you've had it before um, and in enough time to kind of prepare for your week at camp. Um, of course, if you don't get this submitted in on time, that's okay. There will still be plenty of opportunities for the troop activities during the week. Um, you just won't get the first possible sessions that are available. Um, there is an SPL meeting on Monday still uh, where the SPLs go over that schedule of what they have and then see if there's anything else that they'd like to add in, um, as well as at the Tuesday barbecue. But our goal is with that medical lockout date and the, the profile lockout date is that you'll be able to have that information on the Tuesday barbecue and we'll be able to store it in your profile so you would have a schedule you'd be able to reference at that point in time prior to coming to camp. That's the goal, and we'll, we'll hope to get there, um, but at least that information will be there um, for your week. Okay. All right, one of, the, one of the things we have to talk about, of course, COVID-19 preparations um, and how to prepare for summer camp, of course. Um, we've asked differences over the past two years. So what's it going to be this year? Uh, of course, preparing for the world as it is today, not three months from now, because we don't know how things will be then. Um, we're asking for a self-screening assessment that's completed by all troops um, with a roster presented at check-in. Um, this is very, very similar to what we asked for last year. Um, just verifying the symptom check, that you guys are feeling okay that you don't have a sore throat, you don't have a fever, you don't have a stuffy nose, or you aren't sneezing all the time, those kinds of symptoms. Of course, we'll have tests available at the health lodge, um, but we do want to make sure that you're continuing that symptom check daily. Um, what we found last year is that the troops that were sent home uh, were not following the symptom check entirely, um, and some of those scouts had been feeling ill since Sunday, um, so we really want to enforce that symptom check um, so that everybody stays healthy. A uh, camp is probably not the best place for somebody who is sick. Um, but COVID prep. So there's one more thing that we do need to announce. Uh, and it's pretty exciting. Uh, and with that, singing is to return to the dining hall. So if you've stayed on, I appreciate you guys for staying on. Um, and we wanna we wanna welcome singing back this year. It's an awesome opportunity to get back to 
one of the core things that really makes us Yagu of singing in the dining hall. So it's been four years, quite a while to hear those loud dining halls on the Monday song contest, but how do we get those dining halls to be just as loud and just as much competition between singing? In the app, those songs are for reference for you. So whether you're in Three Point, Medicine Boat, or Sandy Beach, there's songs for each of them listed in the app. So that way the scouts that are coming this year can be prepared to sing the, the song and cheer for each of their camps. Um, so it's an awesome opportunity to download the app, get them excited about what, what's to come this summer and, and the return of singing back into the dining halls. All right, employment opportunities. Quinton, are you up again? That would be me. All right, so uh, summer is right around the corner and we are getting ready to put on an incredible program for you all, um, but it is no mere task. We need um, plenty of, you know, uh, hands to help us with this task. And we are, uh, you know, hiring currently for a multitude of positions. Uh, if you have scouts or even just friends who aren't involved in scouting, but maybe looking for a summertime employment opportunity, we are hiring. Um, you know, there's a 15 year old uh, age requirement, but beyond that, um, we take uh, really good care of our staff here. It's a great opportunity. As I had mentioned before, uh, this will be my 10th summer on staff. I've been working here since I was 15. And it's a great place to learn all of the essential skills you'll need for any job that you decide to take in the future. I learned all about teamwork, uh, taking initiative, uh, hard work, taking pride in my work, all of those things I learned here at camp. And I would not be the person I am today without them. Um, so if you know, if you are, or you know somebody that's looking for a summertime job, uh, tell them to, to look into the opportunities that we have here. Uh, we have positions that involve, you know, working in the program centers, whether it be being a lifeguard or working at the nature center and teaching ecology to scouts, or even we have positions uh, that aren't so, um, you know, forward facing with uh, the scouts. We have uh, positions uh, in the kitchen if, you know, that's more your speed, or we have positions uh, in our warehouse that help deliver materials uh, across the reservation. So we have plenty of opportunities if you or someone you know is looking for a job. Um, something else that we are very proud that we can offer is to our staff who are college students or will be joining college, uh, we offer scholarships for um, opportunities for those staff. Uh, over $40,000 in scholarships um, last year. And correct me if I'm wrong, John, but I'm pretty sure last year, around 26 people applied for scholarships and all 26 of them got scholarships. Yes, so um, this is a great opportunity, not to mention um, the money that you save. By working at camp, you get free room and board and three square meals a day. So you're saving on rent and groceries. That's right, parents, you can save on groceries while we feed your kids for the summer. So please send them to camp. <laughs> um, we'll have an amazing time together. And like I said, um, it's honestly the opportunity of a lifetime and I recommend it to anybody uh, who has the, the chance. So uh, feel free, you can apply on our website on yagi.org. There's an application, you can fill that out um, or you know, feel free to, to contact um, any of us um, over the, the website or by email. Awesome, awesome, awesome. So yeah, if you would like a job this summer or you know someone who would like a job this summer, yagi.org slash jobs. So rounding out this meeting, a um, couple other final things. Visitors, um, a cool thing to note is that we do check in and out every visitor that's coming uh, to camp. So whether it's for an hour just to say hello, uh, whether it's for the day, whether it's Friday just to give give blood, um, they check in, they check out at the, the Buckland, they get a wristband, um, and they perform that self-screening assessment. Uh, but we had 1,000, over 1,000 visitors come to camp last year. Um, we do still discourage family nights. Um, come say hello to everybody during the day and that stop by take some pictures, excellent. Um, but those family nights really do promote homesickness um, and it, it does directly correlate 
to it. So we still discard. So the next opportunity to see everybody, um, the Tuesday barbecue for SPLs and Scoutmasters. Um, it's a great opportunity to get those last minute questions answered, find out any policy changes, a uh, little bit new upcoming, um, all of those final details figured out. Uh, and then you'll, you'll hopefully have that first access to your schedule for the week um, or put in any final requests to your program um, requests that you would have filled out on Camp Doc. Um, so it's that great last minute opportunity um, also to have some steak or chicken, a uh, great opportunity for that as well. Um, but that, that will be the next opportunity for us to see each other um, in person. So if you'd like to attend that uh, in the troop section, when you hover over it, there's all the different registration for the different weeks. Um, but it is important to note that week three, there's not going to be a Tuesday barbecue the Tuesday prior for week three, because that would be July 4th. Um, and we decided that some people have a couple other better things to do on July 4th um, and might not want to attend uh, camp. So any week three units that are attending uh, can attend the uh, barbecue on the 27th, on the 27th. Uh, it's also important to note that week eight barbecue, they can attend the prior week for that one as well. Um, the important dates for that are located on the website right here. The Tuesday SPL and Scoutmaster Barbecue, uh, which has all the dates and the specific on when to attend. All right. Blood drives. So there's a quote associated with this slide that, that gets to get said every time now since it got written down. Uh, and everybody has blood. It's a simple statement, but last year uh, we were in a national blood shortage uh, come the summer. And if everybody has blood, everybody has the opportunity to do their part to do a good turn daily and donate blood. Granted, there is the rule of having to be 16 years or older. And if you are 16, you would need that permission slip. Uh, but those older scouts, they can donate blood on, on Friday as well. Um, we have not maxed out those signups for, for blood donations um, any of the weeks, which means Friday is a great opportunity for visitors to come to camp and donate blood as well. They can sign up. Uh, they can donate blood. It's a great opportunity to get them to camp. Uh, they, they give away a lot of stuff. Uh, if you are giving blood, Gatorade, snacks, food, T-shirts, patches, um, lot, lots of everything to make sure you guys have a great experience, um, but also it helps out saving lives at the end of the day. Um, so you have the opportunity to sign up at the Buckland. Uh, when you check in, any leader throughout the week can stop by during the week and sign up there. All right, so we will throw out that opportunity for any last minute questions. Um, we will have this, uh, recording posted probably tomorrow at some point. Um, but the Q&A will also be featured right under the recording um, for easy access. So a lot of these questions uh, will be available for your reference after. So don't worry about writing everything down or taking as many notes. This recording is available and the Q&A will be available as well. Weekly themes are going to be available in the troop section. So if you don't know what the weekly theme is for your camp, you'd like to find out, that'll be under programs in the troop section, and you can select the camp and view the highlight sheet for the summer. Um, and you'd see that week three for three point is Jurassic Camp. But thank you very much for everybody who's attended. Stay on just for another minute in case any last minute questions come up. Um, but truly, thank you very much for attending. Um, if you've got any questions, campyagu at scouting.org. Um, if it's camp doc specific, throw in a request on yagu.org slash camp doc. Um, but otherwise, we are looking forward to a great summer. And thank you so much for attending.